Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the life of Michael Jackson. Michael Joseph Jackson was born on August 29th, 1958 in Gary, Indiana, located just 25 miles from downtown Chicago. Gary, Indiana was founded by U.S. Steel in 1906 as they built a sprawling Gary Works factory there. The jobs they created pulled people from all around to its state-of-the-art factory. Among those who came to Gary were European immigrants and black Americans fleeing the Jim Crow laws that were then in the South. By 1950, it is said that Gary was one of the most segregated cities in the country. Black people were only allowed to live in the Midtown section and were forbidden to cross the Broadway Bridge into the South Side unless for work. At its peak, it was a very diverse and prosperous city. At one point, it was dubbed the city of the century, but then fortunes took a massive change with the onset of white flight. Since then, the city of Gary has had one of America's highest percentage of black Americans at 81%. Gary's decline was brought on by the growing overseas competition in the steel industry, which caused mass layoffs and factories to be closed. Since the closures, the city has been left in ruins, impoverished with most of the city being dilapidated, an influx in gangs and high crime rates. In 1993, Gary earned itself the title as the murder capital of the United States. At that point, it had a murder rate of 91 per 100,000 residents, three times more than Chicago. Our kids are dying in the streets. Dying in the streets, houses, fields of Gary, Indiana, on the way to reclaiming its title as the murder capital of the United States. Numbers are so staggering. That's what it took, so now we're on the map, so we like whatever. You're on the map for murdering them. So, whatever. In 1993, Gary had more murders per capita, 109 among its 119,000 residents, than any other U.S. city. After a decline last year, Gary is now on a pace to smash its all-time record. What is it going to take to stop the baby from dying? Born in Joe Jackson, who's from Arkansas, and Catherine, who's native to Alabama, Michael is the eighth of ten children in the Jackson family. He grew up in a small two-bedroom home on 2300 Jackson Street. The home consisted of two bedrooms and one bathroom and 622 feet of living space. At one point, all 11 members of the Jackson family resided in this small space. Michael once said, you can take five steps from the front door and you'll be at the back. By the time Michael was seven, in the mid 60s, his neighborhood dramatically declined. Gangs and drugs began to thrive in the community. The growing influence of gangs worried Michael's parents. In turn, Joe Jackson's discipline hardened. The timing coincided with the increase in gang violence. They were only encouraged to play with one another, and sleepovers with friends were never allowed. Once the gang threat became an issue, the Jackson children were kept indoors more, and even kept from school on the last day of the year, because that was when the kids settled scores. Michael's two older brothers would walk through the Delaney projects regularly to get to school. That's where many of the gangs would conjugate. The gang members would show love to the brothers for being in the Jackson 5. But then the gang started encroaching on the Jackson block, where they witnessed multiple rumbles between rival gangs. Fighting eventually turned into shootouts, which would have Michael and his family duck into the ground trying to dodge bullets. Joe Jackson was determined to get his family out of gangland warfare. In August of 1969, Motown Records moved Michael and the rest of the Jackson 5 to Los Angeles, where they were put in various hotels. By the late 70s, Michael was increasingly looking to pursue a solo career. With the help of a music producer, Quincy Jones, Michael produced a solo album, Off the Wall. The album was a great success, eventually selling over 20 million copies. His second solo album, Thriller, launched Michael Jackson into a position as the most famous pop singer in the world. With little commercial advertising and promotion, Thriller rose to number one on album sales and remained at the number one spot for a grand total of 37 weeks, attaining 100 million global sales and 29 million sales in the US. Following the successful thriller singles, The Girl Is Mine and Billie Jean, Beat It was released on February 14th, 1983 as the album's third single. The music video for Beat It helped establish Michael as an international pop icon. The inspiration of Beat It in this video came from the Jackson family experiencing gang activity in Gary, Indiana. The video, which cost Michael $150,000 to create after the network refused to finance, was filmed at Skid Row in Los Angeles, mainly on East 5th Street, to add authenticity to the production, but also promote peace between them. 
Michael had the idea to cast rival members of the Crips and Bloods, in addition to 80 genuine members, including members of the Barrio Nuevo Estrada gang. Michael went out and got the gang members through LAPD's gang squad. This is when Michael first connected with the East Coast Crips. The East Coast Crips are the largest black American gang that are located on the east side of South Central Los Angeles. They have many sets, but for this video, members of the 7-6 East Coast Crips participated and were the only Crips used for the video. Michael went and sent out a bus that picked the coast members from Florence and Hooper that took them to downtown LA to shoot the video. Initially, there was a few incidents between the 760s Coast and rival Bloods that were on set, but Michael was able to bring them together and they were able to coexist peacefully. They were paid, fed, they also hung around Michael's trailer between takes and he gave them autographed pictures and even tickets to the upcoming Victory Tour. Let's fast forward to 1987. After winning numerous accolades and skyrocketing to a stratosphere of his own, Michael released his highly anticipated album bad. In November of that same year, Michael released The Way You Make Me Feel as the third single off the album. The video was also filmed at Skid Row in Los Angeles. For this production, Michael tapped in with the 89 East Coast Crips and personally selected them to be in the music video. Boxer from 89 East Coast is seen in the infamous picture where Michael is throwing it up with the East Coast Crips. Michael also had Latino gang members in the music video as well. In addition, Michael had various gangs come to the video shoot and decorate the background with gang graffiti, including Fido's Broadway Gangsta Crips, 107 Hoovers, Zenith 13, 18th Street, and the East Coast Crips. During the video shoot, Michael was very comfortable and was genuinely happy that the Crips were getting their shine. Rumors began to spread in the street that the Crips were behind Michael and had his back. Easy e from NWA spoke on the alleged affiliation. Look, look, you're look, at it. It. look at Michael Jackson. He got all these gang bangers behind them and shit. They don't fuck with him. That same year, Michael recorded the unreleased song, I'm So Blue, and followed that up with Blue Gangsta. Fans speculate that Michael hit a light crip walk on stage to a Beyonce song. In the summer of 2003, Michael returned to Gary, Indiana. It was the first time he had been back in over 20 years. Amidst all the excitement of his visit, Michael bought out an entire Kentucky Fried Chicken and passed out pieces of chicken to his fans in the parking lot. Allegedly, Vice Lords and Gangsta Disciples were at Michael's return and they were allegedly crying and fainting. On June 25th, 2009, Michael Jackson died of a cardiac arrest at the age of 50. Over a four decade career, Michael's contributions to music, dance, and fashion made him a global figure and the biggest superstar ever. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.